What's going on, Mike? What's going on, Will? How are you, bud? I'm good, man. We just started having a conversation before we recorded, for those of you that do not know how shit works with podcasting. Uh, and we started discussing about how to podcast and all that. He has a book here. Like we, We're going to be talking about that so and other things that come up. But I don't know, for anyone interested in starting a podcast, I think that's what we're going to start rolling this off with. Um, but first, I wanted to ask you, what are you, so are you going to start your podcast or are you just, you're, you're using it for your lectures, uh, you know, that. Yeah, it's, so the last time we talked, I think when I was on your show, a lot of my students have sort of said that I should have one <laughs> because right. a lot of times they're searching for meaning or they're not sure where they want to go with their career. And, uh. Some things that I say in class, they find pretty inspirational. And so I thought about it back and forth. And I know that, you know, there's obviously, if I'm going to do the podcast, I want to make sure that number one, I've got something meaningful to say, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, I don't want to be this, the person that's saying the same thing that everybody else is saying. Right. Um, right. Right. So I, uh, I wanted to, I did some research into it, right? Like, if you're going to have a podcast and you're going to do it once a month, you need to have it once a month, right? Those kinds of things. Not that like mm. there's any steadfast rules, but like if you want something that's sustainable, that's long lasting, typically when people, if you're going to do one once a week, the second that you don't have one once a week, you miss like that will like a lot of like your, your traction will sort of decline. Like people that once listen to you might say, Oh, well I can't expect that anymore. So, or it's unreliable. So before I got into a lot of it. I just wanted to make sure I took some time to think a little bit more thoughtfully about, you know, what would be the mission of what I would say? Um, who would be a target audience that I'd like to try and serve? Um, and then, you know, thinking about systemically, how can I fit this routinely in my life to meet those kinds of things? And so it's something to do for fun. I understand that. But at the same time, it's like, if I'm going to do, I want to make sure I do it with quality and I understand all the systems that are involved and what are the benefits of having mixers or doing video versus just audio. So I, I kind of am pretty analytical with that. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I've been thinking a lot about it now that we've been in quarantine. I'll tell you that. Right. Yeah. Especially uh, now that everyone has to stay home. So, well, for most people have to stay home. Uh, but for those that, uh, what do you call it? those have those jobs whatever like you do you, you have to stay home more obviously right because you're you're you had you had school and all that you had to yeah. work at school sorry and uh um how are you still teaching we are completely online so uh it's been somewhat of a culture shift to take twenty thousand students that were once on campus and now going completely online and making sure you have the infrastructure to support, you know, that kind of internet connection for that many students. And um, it's, it's provided some unique challenges. I would say that I feel very fortunate that I've always recorded my lecture videos. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And so I had something to base my content off of for the spring term. So it was just a matter of editing some slides, editing some video content. I have recorded I would say about 65 to 70% of the content over again, now that I have a mic and I have time to, to develop things, but um, we're completely 100% online and the university has even gone to offering courses online in the summer. At this point in time, they're planning to go back to um, the, the campus in the fall. They're, they're making efforts to try and have some kind of return to campus in the fall. Um, but, even then there's going to be some very important guidelines that have to be followed. Um, because once you have international students, you have students from all different States, right. You bring everybody back to campus. Again, the big concern is not, you know, it's, it's the big concern is reoccurrences in possibly uh, reinfecting in, you know, two or three months from now, we're back where we started from. <laughs> and so yeah, we, yeah. Don't, we, we don't want that. And, you know, a university's number one goal is beyond education is really to make sure that students that choose to come to a university are safe and um, protected. And so if we can't verify that it has to stay online until we feel that we have policies and procedures in place to make sure that, that, that they're able to do so. And what is your like estimation when you guys are going to return to the campus and, 
I know it's not going to be the norm, but right. Uh, yeah. Right now they're looking at fall. So for Drexel, that's spring term. That's September the 21st or so. Um, right. And, you th- well, I'm, yeah, no, but like I'm saying, like, do you think that it's, it's actually going to happen or do you think yeah, they're I mean, going to push it? Well, we'll find out the game plan right now. I would say the game plan right now is that they've put together task forces and strategic um, groups, think tank groups to try and, um, you know, plan so that we can go back to campus in the fall. But, you know, of course, with coronavirus, it's a very um, fluid situation. And so as new information continues to come out, you know, we have to be prepared to be flexible um, with that start date. So I think that uh, at least right now, the plan is to be back in the fall um, and they're making efforts to make sure that, you know, whether people have to come to campus, I, I can't speak specifically in terms of what the, what the university is choosing to do. They're sort of making those types of things, but this is something that all universities have to do with, with this pandemic is sort of figure out if we're going to go back to campus, when might a good time to go back to campus be, what are some of the risks of bringing people from different countries and different States back to one location? Um, you know, what kinds of policies and procedures need to be in place within the classroom? What types of policies and procedures need to be in place, um, you know, during lab situations? So that's a big problem is like we have, we offer a lot of anatomy and physiology, right? And so we have cadaver labs where students are, you know, six students or so around a table about the size of my desk here. And, you know, they're learning very close proximity about, you know, someone who's donated their body to science. And so putting people that close in proximity is, is a concern. So thinking about offering opportunities where they can do like virtual type labs where um, I don't have it with me, but uh, like there's something called essentials of anatomy five, which provides like a digital layout of the anatomy in very, very fine detail. And so, um, you know, we're rethinking how to offer education. So that way students, the quality of the education isn't changing. Um, you know, some students are thriving right now. I would tell you that some students are thriving in the environment where they get to sort of breathe a little bit. They don't have to wake up at a certain time. They could review the content whenever they want. But so to answer your question is I don't really know how feasible it's going to be. I know the game plan, at least right now with the way the trends are going is that there's efforts to be back on campus for the fall term, which is, you know, it's, it's still a ways away, but it's something that is, something to look forward to, right? It's not like, oh, we're going to be like this for another two years. <laughs> right. Um, it's so it, it's, it's positive, but you know, of course, if things change or as things begin to open up, if we start to see cases increase, you know, then we have to change our thinking again. And um, the number one priority is always making sure that the students are protected. Right. And so that's, that's, Word. that's our responsibility. So for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So it seems like we're going into this. Uh, this is my, I have been going over this in my head for, since, uh, for a while now, whatever. But the VR thing, the AR, virtual reality, augmented reality, yeah, whatever, all these different diff- types of technologies that lead us into the different, uh, the future, basically. I don't want to go too far, but. What you're saying, from what you're telling me, is I, I'm predicting like how like you guys are gonna learn. You're gonna learn how to deal with this situation right now, this coronavirus, and then the, there's gonna be another plague, of course, maybe a different strain of the coronavirus, whatever. The COVID-19 is gonna be a different one. It's, it's probably gonna uh, be worse, of course. It's gonna hit 60% instead of the 10%, whatever it is the numbers are. Um, and we're just gonna shift into this VR and AR future you know what i mean like everyone's gonna be uh we, you know what i'm saying like it seems like that's what we're leading into and yeah i'm expecting it to happen so i i don't it's like whatever happens happens whether we go back to i don't think we're gonna go back to our normal life but maybe if we do that's cool but if we don't then we're gonna we're all gonna have to learn how to adapt you know yeah i i would say that so it's funny you bring this up so about a year ago um before anybody knew the impact coronavirus is going to have on us was um, the Dean of our college. who I have a very good relationship with. She, um, you know, I was very fortunate enough to be asked to serve on a committee about sort of thinking about some of these things like, you know, 
understanding how higher education is offered today and then what it might look like 20 years from now, right? Um, or what it might look like 10 years from now or five years from now with some of the technologies with machine learning and um, like you said, like augmented and virtual reality, right? Like people could put on a pair of goggles and it's a cadaver and it looks real. It's right there in front of them. Um, so we've been thinking about some of those things and, and trying to figure out sort of like, well, how could we as an organization and as a university um, position ourselves, be prepared for the advances in technology, which are definitely coming, whether we're ready or not. The coronavirus, if anything, has accelerated um, our need to embrace those types of technologies. And so typically, a lot of people, I think, um, from a higher education standpoint, like there's a value of being in the classroom and working one to one with somebody and um, sort of like the old way of thinking, but you know, yeah. students go to a class, teachers in the room, provides information, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we were already thinking along the lines that this could be more of a modular type of curriculum. So rather than looking at a syllabus and like this is a, a, a wide spectrum of what needs to be accomplished in the next 16 weeks, we were thinking that the curriculum itself may actually change in the future where we, we go more with modules of like, okay, we're just going to focus on um, – clinical reasoning skills right and like for the next six weeks we're doing nothing but clinical reasoning skills and, and so rather than having all of these classes that are sort of like stacked in mm -hmm. um they're all different coursework students would have the opportunity of really going deep and learning one specific content area and not only knowing it but also um being able to apply and understand and really understand something fully as opposed to getting sort of a, a face value overview of what something is and do some application stuff. So we've been thinking about a lot of these type, these kinds of things. I think coronavirus just sort of said, well, you might be ready five years from now, but now we're going to use what we have now. And now you're forced to do it right mm, now. And so, right. um, you know, people who maybe were not prepared for those kinds of that kind of thinking, I kind of saw it, the writing on the walls, I've told you, I've always recorded all of my lectures just as more of a courtesy for my students. I tell my students, like, I don't want, like, I want you to be in the room and I want you to show up and be ready to engage in class discussions. And like, let's actually learn, like, let's not waste anybody's time. And so the last thing I want you to worry about is writing every single word down that I say. So I'll just record the lectures and post the videos for you. Um, so if you miss anything, you can go back and listen anytime. Like I, the eye in the sky has got you. Right. Um, and students really appreciate that. Some would say, well, what's, what's the incentive if students don't want to come to class? And I say, well, students that get value out of coming to class live and then having it as a backup, you're serving them. And students who maybe stop coming to class, but they can review the material on their own, like maybe that's the best way for that student to learn. Mm -hmm. right? And right. so you're instead of forcing somebody to learn in one particular way where the material is being disseminated live in front of you, right? Maybe by recording it and using these technological advances, you could adapt to a lot of different kinds of learners. And um, some, sometimes, you know, we do two hour classes, Will. So two hour classes. So, and a lot of times we don't take a break. And so going right. two hours, like you're pretty much tapped out by the end of it. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's kind of nice to have it on recording. And if you're working from home, you can watch, okay, I'm going to watch the first 20 minutes while I'm making a coffee. Okay, boom do that. And then, you know, 20 minutes, think about like, if you ever listen to a podcast and you go grocery shopping, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously it's not as frequently you're going grocery shopping these days, but it seems like time goes by very quickly and the podcast is over. So um, I kind of look at it as a way where we're offering more students and we're being more inclusive to students, different learning styles. So, right. um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that, it's without question going to be the way of the future mm -hmm. and um, definitely the way of the present with at least audio and what we're doing here through zoom. Yeah. So it, it's something to keep in mind. And, and I think um, we're just going to see more of it. So it's uh, it's good, but at the same token, there's learning curves for both faculty members as well as students. Like I'm very fortunate that I'm sort of in the sweet spot where I'm like, older than my students by about eight to 10 years. But at the same token, um, I also appreciate 
technology and like where technology is going. So I kind of like see the link, mm -hmm. but some folks, some folks haven't yet. And, you know, it's been a little bit more of a challenge for them. Some students, even though the technology exists, they don't use it. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, we try to do things that are, you know, try and like, I use a platform called Packback, which has AI integrated into it. Mm. And uh, basically it's a discussion board forum. So okay. imagine like, you know, a professor puts a question says, I want you to talk about this. Well, you would go on and pretty much most of the students would all say the same thing or different versions of the same thing. And so the idea behind Packback is the AI reads your question and sort of figures out, wait, number one, it determines if you're plagiarizing. So it helps you become a better question asker. Mm. And so, and that's kind of a, a really important tool for, for students as, you know, as we become professionals as being a good communicator. So I use a lot of those kinds of tools and, you know, a lot of students are interested in, we try to connect the content. We try to connect things about current events that they're interested in with, with COVID-19. Um, and so that's a, a good way. It gives me a good pulse for where the students are at. And the cool thing is the interface. If you look at the interface, it looks very similar to a Twitter feed. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like now you're resonating with a platform that they're probably, most of the students are probably familiar with. Right. right. They grew up during the, during the Twitter age. Yeah. Twitter taught them well. <laughs> so, so it's kind of cool that the interface functions very similarly to Twitter in a lot of ways. Right. But yeah. it's, it's without it's the academic. likes and the retweets and shit. <laughs> it's just exactly, basic format. Exactly. I get what you mean though. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, so we're using, I'm using AI already. It's not like as sophisticated as it can be, but it's one way where I'm already integrating that technology into the classroom. So I yeah. think it's helpful. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, you're see you're mentioning AI and dude, this is the future, man. Like it's going to lead to this shit where we're going to have to fucking stay home <laughs> and do our best to stay sane, you know what I mean? A lot of people like you you mentioned a lot of people are not dealing with everyone has has their own little struggle uh because everyone was so adapted to the world of being outside, socializing and all that. And now a lot of people are dealing with <laughs> dealing with their spouse or dealing with their kids at home or dealing with not being able to do what the fuck they want to go to the restaurant that they love to go to or whatever. So yeah. it's like a, this is the world that I've already lived in for the last five years or whatever. Cause I'm already a indoor hermit, whatever you, I mean, not hermit. Uh, what do you call that? A hermit crab, right? Yeah. That's what they call those people that they're yeah. always in the house and shit. So it's like, this has been my lifestyle for years anyway. So it's kind of, I'm already adapted to it, but, and technology is my best friend. Uh, in a sense, I have my, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, my things against it, but that's because you have to learn how to maintain and keep, keep it moderated. You know what I mean? You have to make sure you're not on your phone too much or make sure you're not on social media too much where it could fuck it, right. you know, fuck your brain up pretty much. Uh, it's a lot of shit that a lot of people are going to learn with this that I've been trying to do on this podcast to try to put it out there because I didn't know this was going to happen, but this is kind of what the point of the podcast is to, to, for this future of us not being able to do the things that we used to do. You know what I mean? And I'm hoping well, we could do some, uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, well, one of the things that I I'm so thankful for mm -hmm. is that podcasts and YouTube channels, they, they are still producing content among yeah. this, this coronavirus because, um, you know, really, it gives you some form of entertainment and a lot of it is searchable, self-selected entertainment, not something you just turn on the television and watch cable and they've already determined what you're going to watch. Right. And so yeah. um, I, I kind of like how you can do it on your own time. And that I'm so thankful that podcasts and, and YouTube channels are, are still staying active during the coronavirus um, and that there's new content. Cause that's sort of like, that keeps me going in a lot of ways. Like, you know, but I would say the other thing too, that really comes to mind is that, I mean, some people, I've learned to be more uh, responsible with my finances during this mm -hmm. because like, I won't go out and eat. You can't really go out to eat. So I've embraced cooking more from home. And so like, that's a skill that I've always wanted to develop. Um, so watching things like like YouTube or um, there's a documentary I'm watching now about fat, salt, acid, and heat, I think it's called. It's a really good one. Um, and just sort of learning the nuances of, of how to, so I learned how to make dough and, you know, and like 
I made my own pizza. So like things that like I would probably never really have a clue on how to do. I would probably just buy a pizza for 30 bucks. It's like, well, the ingredients are $5 and then you learned a skill. So I'm trying to, as much as possible, use, uh, use some of the time at home to be productive and add things that maybe I was deficient in prior to the coronavirus. That's perfect, dude. That's, I was going to ask you that too. It's like, how, what are you doing at home? Cause I don't, yeah. I'm doing the same shit I've always been doing is training and then trying to code. Basically I'm trying to learn how to code and, and just keep myself together as well. Uh, cause I, I didn't realize how, uh, I thought I was fine. Like in terms of meditation, everything I'm doing, I'm, I'm good. I'm good at being at home all the time. I'm good at not working, but my, my, my brain says otherwise. So it's just interesting, uh, what my brain is doing in terms of this, uh, this pandemic or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that, that's cool, man. Yeah. What you're saying is what I'm suggesting to everyone too, is just what have you always wanted to do? You know, there's things you can do on YouTube to learn. Uh, I spent so many years on YouTube learning how to edit, uh, to film. I, was, I wanted to be a filmmaker and all that. So I, I spent a lot of years, a lot of time watching, uh, tutorials and shit. So same thing, what you're doing, looking up tutorials, how to cook or how to make bread or whatever, make uh pizza. You could do anything on YouTube, man, for the most part. Like, these people have been right. doing that shit since, what, uh, 10 years ago, whatever. They've been putting up tutorials for today so you can go back and watch how to uh, make pasta, for like, from scratch or whatever. Like, exactly. everything's on there. It's crazy. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of content. You can't you, – and one of the things that's kind of interesting is I know that that's – something that is definitely taking a trend in the upward direction. Cause if you go to the grocery stores, you can't find yeast anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, I found a place online thanks to my, you know, one of my best friends, he, he goes through this, uh, this website, I guess, do you want me to tell you what it is? <laughs> sure. You can say it, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's, nu it's nuts. It's nuts.com. I don't want to tell too many people about that because then if I need yeast, I won't be able to get it. They'll oh, it's fine. Out. It's not like hundreds of people listening to this. <laughs> the, but the, but uh, yeah, but nuts.com, you can get yeast and they'll ship it to your door, which is kind of cool. Like, you know, like a four ounce bag is like 16 or 16 or so packets of those instant active dry yeast. So you can make bread 16 times. Wow. You know, that, so it's like, you know, it's, you have, it gets you through a while. Well, that's good. So, thank, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> yeah, man. If you need stuff like that, you know, they'll, you know, they have great healthy snacks on there. It's, it's really a great, uh, it's a great resource. So shout out to Jimmy Gompertz. <laughs> um, thanks for doing that, Jim. Thank you, Jim. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I try to, I tell everybody, it's like some of the students are having difficulty with sort of what am I going to do pent up in the house? How do I keep my workouts going? All that type of stuff. And I'll tell you the truth is I struggled with workouts too a little bit, right? I mean, I, jujitsu was my major source of training. And so I've had to become more creative. Right. And, um, you know, I'm, I've been looking into buying something like an, I was looking at Peloton for a while. I was looking at, um, you know, things like the assault air bike, which is more integrated to strength and conditioning type programs and CrossFit type programs. I see a lot of mixed martial arts. I say, well, maybe that's more appropriate because you see a lot of mixed martial artists that train that sort of, you know, in between rounds, they'll jump on one of those bikes and they'll, they'll, you know, yeah. try and do like 20 or 30 calories as fast as possible. And so it's very high intensity interval training type. Um, but of course, you know, where to put it, take on the cost. Will I use it after pandemic's over? Right. All these things make their, their considerations. But um, so, yeah, I, I would just tell everybody it's, it's, it's not easy being inside, but like if there's ever a project you wanted to do or if there's a skill you wanted to learn, like there's no better time to screw up on it because you have plenty of time to try again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Okay. You're not, you're going to suck at it no matter what you do with that. When you're first time doing something, I mean, unless you're some type of talented figure that just so happens to be a natural at it, but uh, right. like everything, you're going to start off from the bottom <laughs> and you're going to suck at it. And that's the most frustrating part, man. Uh, like meditation, if you start, have you meditated or tried? I have, okay. I have done meditation. I've played with things like apps. I've tried doing things on uh, like Sam Harris's. Um, oh, I love his app, man. His app is my you know, favorite. Waking yeah. up, right? I think it's called. Waking yeah. Up. Waking up app. Yeah. So uh, I've tried doing it that way. Um, how was it going for you? Off and on. I haven't done it consistently. I'll tell you the truth. Cause I yeah. always, I know this is going to sound completely cliche, but I always sort of think like, Am I doing it wrong? How do I know? Like, you know, when you exercise, it's, you know, I'm doing it right. Like, how do you know you're doing it right? right. Maybe you could shed some light. I, I, I would like I can, to hear it. 
I can definitely help you. Like, there's no. Um, I'm trying to not be biased here. Sam Harris usually says that you're doing it right when you're you're being aware. Compl- See, it's hard to say this because it's like you, when you when you meditate. Let's say the first five minutes you meditate. What's gonna happen? The thoughts. The thoughts distract you. You start thinking about things. You're not meditating. You're thinking about those things. But when you are aware that you're thinking about those things. And you allow them to sh- you allow them to just pass by as you continue to focus on your breathing or whatever you're focusing on. It depends on whatever you're focused on. There's a lot. There's a lot of different techniques. But if you're focused, let's say the the the, uh, the beginner's technique is to focus on your breath. So if you're able to focus on your breath for the first five minutes, and even adults, even with the adults occurring, you still focus on your breath. Like it, it'll it's like a tug of war you're playing with your your mind here. We're trying to focus on your breath. And then there's just no tug of war anymore. That's when you're, you, you know, you're doing it, I think, right, in my opinion, is when you're able to let things go, when you're able to just feel, be in the moment, be present. You, you allow things to just be there as is. And that right there, that, that part of the meditation is what you can apply to your life, uh, like this pandemic. Um, I'm... I see myself more of a, a stoic, a stoic person, stoicism and all that. I see a lot of uh, things that I relate myself to, but when this whole thing that's going on, it's like, I can't control it. If I die from it, I die from it. If I don't die from it, I don't die from it. If my mom dies or if anybody dies, I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be in the moment. All these things that I experienced during my meditation, I can apply that to my life. And that's when you know you're doing it right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when yeah, you get, I, I, yeah, maybe I haven't done it consistently. Yeah. You, I feel resistance sometimes where I'm like, ah, oh, that's I normal. I should be doing it. I know that's, I should be doing it, but it's like, it's really not convenient right now. And like, I feel like there has to be the opportune time. It's got to be like early in the morning when the sun's coming up or right at the end of the day. You and do like, it. You do it whenever. Have a, have a cup of tea next to me. Like, I, I like, so like in my head, I build up these things. Like, that's I exactly. need to create the environment where like I can be that. Um, in that Zen like state, but when I'm actually doing it, sometimes like I try and focus on breathing. I try and focus on like, I've used headspace before. Um, I've done their like 10 day trial type of a thing. Um, but generally, generally speak, I don't like to have like payments, like too many, I don't like, I don't like payments, which is one of the reasons why I decided against the Peloton because, um, you know, you're married to a $40 a month payment for the interface. And so mm. I, uh, I was like, well, if I just buy a bike, it's one purchase and then I have it. I don't have any payments, monthly payments. And so uh, that's why I decided not to continue with those subscription services with things like Headspace. But, you know, I, I think like I like guided meditation that I sort of feel like I'm doing it right in that realm. Um, I want to get to the place where I could literally just say, okay, I think, you know, I need like, I'm a little bit anxious right now. I need to sit down. I need to meditate. I think I'm like making something a bigger deal than it actually is. And I need to be able to just have the discipline to sit down and do it um, and not judge myself for what's going on and saying like, oh, this is, you're, this isn't working. You're not doing it right. You know what I mean? That is something that I have found with my failure of meditation. I've even read Dan Harris's book, um, who's the ABC anchor who uh, had a anxiety attack live on air. Um, right. You could Google it and he, he YouTube it and you see him having the anxiety attack on air and they had to cut the scene early. But I always, I think that's the major thing that not only, at least for myself and I'm sure a lot of other people are going through is right. when you try to do meditation, it's, am I doing it right? Um, am I doing this and I'm not getting any benefit? How do I know I'm getting benefit? Right? Like, so what are some signs or what are some measurables that people might be able to, say, well, if I do this practice, like where is one area in my life where I know I could say, well, it may not be like a tangible, here's this cup. I, it's there. It wasn't there before. But what are some things in people's lives where by doing it, they could say, well, this is how I know it's working. Right. This is how I know it's working uh, for me personally. That right there is, a, is I want to underline that text. Is my experience, my experience, the experience mm. of consciousness, all these things that occur throughout my mind is, is my mind, it's my world in my head. So whenever something happens to me, my emotions, whatever, I, I, I acknowledge it. 
So right there with mindfulness, once you practice enough, I've been doing this shit for like five years, not Sam Harris and waking up, but just meditation in general on and off. But consistently recently for a year, I've been doing uh, uh, two years, I should say, because Headspace, I was on it for a year. I paid for it uh, and I did it consistently. But now waking up has it really woke me up no pun intended it really woke me up to like what meditation is really about because headspace was like a a general like a you know you're, you're just playing around you're, you're trying to figure out what this is and i don't know if i was going to figure it out but because of sam harris he got me to this point of understanding the self uh the he introduced me to different meditators that talk about the headless way. Like there's just different techniques I didn't know about. It's just right. like, it's just like jujitsu, dude. So that's what I, how I look at meditation. It's just like jujitsu. It's a class that you go to, you learn a technique from the one teacher. You, you try that thing to, and, and, and when you roll, you know, when you roll, uh, uh, doing a rolling or whatever, and you try that technique several times and it fails, 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 fails until you finally get it on somebody. Are we still there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm here. I'm I look here. like I froze. Uh, I'm trying not to swing too much. No, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's being you're being mindful. That that's one one benefit of the meditation thing. So you are aware of things in terms of what you do on a consistent basis, your behaviors, your emotions. Andrew, you quiet. Shh. Um, you're you're able to. Uh, in the moment, understand something that you're doing and like, oh, why am I doing this? And continue either like the way you want to lead yourself into doing something else that you want to do. So like meditation. Right. Uh, dude, I'm gonna just, let me just give you a couple of recommendations for, real fast. Mm -hmm. Just try to do it for five minutes a day. Have you been doing that or, or you, can you do more than five minutes in your day? I could, I mean, when I when I was doing it, I was doing about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes a day. I could do five minutes. I mean, there's a, a really good app that I've used, I need to get back on it. And I think it, it provides the community aspect of it, which is um, Insight Timer, right? Have you used that one? Insight Timer? No, I never heard of it. It's an it's the same kind of app, but like it's sort of like um, it's they have a free version, they have a paid version. It's 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 another one of those apps that's in the same market as Headspace and Calm and some and wait, you know wake. Do you have to pay for waking up? Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. He okay, so I don't I I don't like to talk about this because this is his product. He he yeah. usually says it, but you can pay for it if you have the money. But if you don't, if you can't afford it, he tells everyone to email, to contact him through email, and he'll give you a free year basically with the app. Wow. Yeah. So if you want to try the app for a year, if you can't afford sure. it, you can uh, do that. I did that because I couldn't afford it. But now I'm like, dude, this his app is so fucking good. I want to pay for it now. So it's, I think it's like yeah. reverse psychology. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, go ahead. So what you were saying? No, so I, it's so I, I've used things like Insight Timer, um, which sort of it sounds like is what you're getting out of waking up, which is um, it sort of has like community. You can see people who are in your neighborhood, um, people who are meditating at the same time you're meditating. Um, you can connect. It's got like a social media type feature where you can like connect and become friends with these people that are meditating with you. And that's your way of connecting with people around the world. Um, and so I kind of like that. I just haven't, uh, I guess I haven't found a lot of people that I already know that are using it. Um, my buddy, J uh, Jerry, who's out of down in Maryland, he, uh, he uses it and he's sort of highly recommended that I use it. So I need to get back on it. I need a little bit more accountability, I think with, with the meditation piece. Um, so that's my experience with it. It's been really great. You, it's got like you can timer, you can put different sounds in the background. Um, you could do five minutes, you can do one minute meditation. So I think, I think that's the key is making it something where, okay, I'm going to commit to doing this for five minutes a day. I'm going to do it for the next month. Right. And just, you know, something that's so easy to do that five minutes is nothing. Right. Um, and so I, I need to get back into meditation. Definitely. Right. Without question. I haven't been practicing it as much as I have, I should be. Um, and so I real, I'm aware that I need to be doing it, but I haven't been doing it as faithfully as I have in the past. Yeah. So again, just to, the point, 
for me, my uh, my purpose behind meditating is so that I can learn how to be mindful more. Uh, mindfulness is a tool that I consider it so that you can I can focus on things that I want to do. I struggle before meditation. I struggle so much with holding myself accountable, being disciplined and or being hard on myself. There's so many things I struggle with mentally because I was always in my head. Like like you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, you're always in your head. Oh, when should I do this? How should I do this? Should I drink tea? Whatever. You don't have to do anything, but just sit your ass down in a comfortable spot and just do it. You don't need to do it. At, as long as you're not me, I learned I can't do it after 9 p.m. because that's when I start to get sleepy. So I mm-hmm. fall asleep while I meditate and I'm sitting there sleeping and that's not meditation. So I know not to do it past 9 p.m. So, okay, it needs to be in between 7 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., whatever, either or. I can meditate up to an hour. I could do if I want to, but I prefer 20 minutes. 20 minutes is the sweet spot for me where Mm -hmm. I get the full effect and I can practice every day for 20 minutes. I can do that for sure. So once you find your your point where you're comfortable with – I, th- I think again I, st- I recommend five try five minutes a day every day hold and picking a time in a day that you know that you're not going to do anything do it five minutes you're going to realize I should probably do more then you're going to increase it to 10 minutes a day then you're going to want to do more probably 15 minutes because yeah. the effect just like jiu-jitsu just yeah like jiu-jitsu. exactly I don't think the effect of mindfulness is going to kick into you until you understand what it is uh, right. and that's why listen to Sam Harris I think is, is the perfect app because again, this is my bias because he just explains everything in detail what what consciousness is and because he's a neuroscientist, he understands this shit and he's been mm-hmm. he's been talking to fucking different meditators all around the world like he the uh, gurus and all these dudes whatever that know a lot about meditation the the eastern what is it the uh because we have our own the western way of doing it is the woo woo like oh meditation oh like you do all this weird shit the chakras. There's none of that shit what he what he's trying to do. He's just trying to get you in contact with consciousness and what it's doing in the moment. So that once you understand that, you get it. You're like, oh, oh shit. For me, I'm just again, I'm just expressing my own yeah. uh perspective. But what about um so a couple other challenges that I've had when I've tried to meditate have been um if I do it at a certain time of day, yeah, right? Sometimes I will feel like I'm falling asleep. And, um, you know, then I'm like, oh, how how much time has gone by? And like, I'm not, you know, again, I, I judge myself not doing it right. I will tell you that typically the days when I, when I was doing it consistently, I've noticed, I tried doing it first thing in the morning. That's when good. I wake up, I'd have like my routine. Cause I'm like, all right, well, I really need to, be, I have a reason for why I think, you know, for me doing it in the morning is good because I have the whole rest of the day ahead of me. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I'll, I think I'll be more mindful and make better decisions when I need to make decisions under pressure situations, I think there'll be better decisions at that time um, versus doing them at the end, at the end of the day where I'm going to sleep. But, you know, I kind of look at the benefits of meditation. What I sort of think theoretically what it will do is just like how, like if you go to bed with a full head and you're, you're just, you're just uh, like overwhelmed. It's just been a long day and you sleep and you wake up the next morning and like, it just reset. You feel like everything's clear and everything's, wiped clean i kind of feel like meditation can do that in the awakened state yeah yeah it <laughs> right? can. yeah it that's can. that's kind of i kind of feel like that's one of the benefits is sort of what sleep does to you when you overnight meditation could do that to you in the awakened state yes. throughout the day to help yeah. you right now you have to keep right? doing yeah you got to be consistent and then as soon as you're consistent your mind You'll understand what it is and your thoughts. Yeah, you'll be you'll continue to do this stupid shit that you do as a human being, but you'll realize what it is because of meditation. And that's what really the benefits are is just being able to use mindfulness in that moment whenever it does come. Uh, Because I'm not perfect, of course. Mindfulness is not always 100 percent. It's never 100 percent. Actually, it's like maybe throughout my whole day nowadays because i haven't been i've been meditating i've been trying to get back on to meditation because i realized i've been fucking up again but uh from not meditating it was like tw- like not even there was like 10 percent maybe of mindfulness with meditation increased to 60 percent throughout my day i'll think of things what I, and I, as i'm doing it oh shit why am i doing this or 
oh, I'm about to scream at somebody. I'm, just scream, I'm, I'm about to scream at my kids or scream at my wife because she says something that really upset at me. I'm in a moment of mindfulness. Boom. It tells me not to, oh, I don't have to yell. Let's, let's just, re- you know, relax and just let's do this the right sure. way. Blah, blah, blah. That's what mindfulness is. And it's just, you can use it as a tool so that anything you want to do, you can lead your body into doing that thing. Because there's, there's a whole different realm of explanation of what consciousness consciousness is and why you do things. And I'm trying to learn about that, too. Uh, For sure. Yeah, because it's I'm interesting gonna, how we work. I'm going to do this more, then. Yeah, I'm going to get into this some more. I mean, I have the apps. I have them there. Yeah. It's just a matter of just, you know, almost like scheduling it. I hate to say scheduling it and making it such, such a regimented process, but, like, I find that sometimes when you're home and you've got like, the, you know, I'm in a good place today because I got a lot of work done. I was up pretty late last night getting things done for the, the week ahead. But I think like having a good calendar system like is really, really important. And um, like, even if you're, you're home, people say, oh, I'll just stay up to two o'clock in the morning and I'll sleep till, you know, nine or 10. And then I'll get about my day and just kind of like figure, I'll just go based off of my mood. What I try to do on Sundays is look at my schedule from like 7 a.m. till 11 p.m. And I block out time, which I call my time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. And then yep. that's that's the space where I can read books that I want to read. I can work on personal endeavors. Uh, I can do meditation. I can work out. Right. And so like I put that in the my time category. And then what I try to do is um, I also use the calendar as little gaps throughout the day. Because one of the things I noticed um, so I have a lot of good references or probably content people are pretty familiar with, but so calendaring, and then, uh, there's this book by Cal Newport called deep work. And if people have, I'm sure people have heard about it before, but if you haven't, the general idea is like when you have so many different things to do, but you can't really get them done. Um, why can't you get them done? And a lot of times it's because either you're inundated with too many emails or too many phone calls and you've overcommitted to two different things and you haven't had the time to just sit down and do the work for two or three hours at a time. And so deep work is all about giving yourself and building long uninterrupted periods of time throughout the day where you can get work done, like measurable work to to move things forward. So like I've submitted a bunch of manuscripts for publication uh, while we've, we've been in quarantine. So I'll take like a three hour block in the morning, say like from nine to 12, emails off. I don't take meetings during those times. And I just focus on doing the work. Cause if you only give yourself like an hour to do those kinds of things, you're probably not going to make much progress. Right. You'll kind of say like, well, now that I'm into it, I really want to like finish it. And so deep work gives you an opportunity to get past that one hour where you sort of figure out, okay, what am I doing? And then gives you two solid hours to really work. Some people do it every single day by taking two hours in the beginning of their day. And they do the deep work before the rest of the day picks up. Some do it at the end of the day. You can, Cal Newport talks about how you can do deep work as like, say you schedule your day and Thursday's the end of the week and you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where you can do three days in a row and just do marathon type days. So there's different ways of doing it, but I found that having a strong calendar system and um, employing prints blocks of time, which is my time or deep work time. And then whenever there's times in between there, is when I'll do meetings, right? When I can meet with people, because it's sort of like, you know, I'm not doing cognitively demanding work at this time. I can meet with people, we can have conversations. And I feel, I find that I'm actually in the moment more during those meetings because I'm not worried about the work that I have to do or have to, or still have to do. So uh, I think meditation, bringing it back full circle mm-hmm. is something that really can, with integrating in those kinds of systems is to build that into my, my time um, and really try and do the best that I can and not be distracted by other things. And so um, I think the value is, is the piece that I, I need to re-engage with and realize, you know, what is the value and why is this important, right? We see it with exercise. We see it with sleep. We see it with healthy eating. Like I need to go back and revisit that and say, well, what is the real value and how is this going to make me a better person? I think once that, that I find out what that thing is, like you said, once you really know what it is, then it'll become a routine practice that you just realize has to be done. Right. Right. So anyway, that's sort of like, I'm going to definitely recommit to this. Um, by the next time you hear from me, I would have been meditating five minutes a day, at least for since, you know, at, at least five minutes a day, I can commit to that 
until the next time we connect about stuff. Yes, man. And uh, again, just hit me up if anything. I, I'm I'm not like a, a guru or whatever. I'm not a professional, but I do love meditation. It is my heart and soul. Uh, it is everything that I I just I'm like so happy about it. And I just I'm willing to help anybody that wants to learn how to do it. For those of you listening, you can hit me up, send the email to William knows nothing at gmail.com. I'm willing to help you too. Don't matter. Doesn't I, I it's just I just want people to be be better for themselves. You know what I mean? I want you to do better for yourself too. You know what I mean? You're doing your own thing in your own life, but I always encourage anything that can help you. And for me personally, I don't meditation I, I've learned, I just recently learned this that meditation is not for everybody, but mm -hmm. it's for everybody to try, just like jujitsu. Jujitsu is not for everybody, but it's for everybody to at least try, experience it, see what it is. And then if you don't like it, you tried it for whatever, three months and you don't like it, okay, you just you do something else. You right. just brought up something, Deep Work, the book. Um, that's what it's called, right? Yeah, Deep Work. Okay. Um, that you can use that as a system. We all have different systems in, in, our, in our world that gets so we can get shit done. Everyone has a system. Jocko Willink, you know Jocko Willink, right? I do. Yeah. He has a, a system of extreme ownership. You know, he, he has his, I'm listening to his, his, auto, his audio book, Extreme Ownership. And I'm just listening because I'm just curious about what his, his uh, system is. Because I want to be a better leader uh, sure. so that I can teach better. I want to teach meditation. I want to teach jujitsu, whatever else that comes to, that I can teach. I want to be able to do this as a, as a better, uh, as a leader, whatever. Uh, but anyway, I'm listening to his system and, you, and I'm paying attention to your system. Everyone has their own system to get shit done. Whatever works for you, that's all that matters as long as it works. Right. With meditation, it, it may not work for everybody, but I, I, I feel like it might work for you. You just have to keep doing it, man. And, and, uh, and again, any questions you have, I'll be willing to help you. But well, I that's think- That's the big thing with this book talks about. Right. Oh, oh meditation? Well, or uh, so- you Let's know, get into that. Day. Let's get into that book. Yeah, we, we were supposed to talk yeah. about that, but I'm like so all over the place with the meditation stuff. Go ahead. So Tim Ferriss is uh, a good author of a book called um, The 4-Hour Work Week, right? And so like, if you only had four hours to work a day, how would you get things done? How would you be productive? And he talks about, you know, his um, – there's diff different principles like automation, simplification, delegation, and there's one more. Um so eliminate, automate, simplify, and delegate. Those are the four. And so like some things that instead of taking everything on yourself, he, he's a well-known author that's written about these kinds of things. He has a book called The 4-Hour Chef, which teaches the same principles on how to cook. He's got one called The 4-Hour Body, which is about health and fitness and diet. Um, in this book, which is called Tools of Titans, I got this book in 2016 to 2017, I believe. And um, he interviews like a lot of people that appeared on his podcast, the Tim Sher Tim, Tim Ferriss show. And he started finding sort of the ties that most successful people in the world, like what are the things that billionaire investors do? What are the things that like, uh, like Floyd Mayweather does to get ready for a fight And the common themes that come back to most of these people is like you said, they have a system that works for them, but, at the end of the day, a lot of what people do is meditation was like 80% or more of the cases, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of them, a lot of them exercise. Um, a lot of them value things like sleep. Okay. That's a big thing. And another one is journaling, right? And so like the importance of journaling, getting your thoughts um, out onto paper when things are anxious and like maybe you, you're meditating, but still, it becomes too much to bear and it's, it's just, you got a lot going on and you're afraid you're going to, you're going to forget certain things and you're frustrated. It's like, write about it, right? Get it onto paper, get it out of your head somewhere else that will be accountable for you. And so uh, the book is really good because it, um, it interviews like a lot of, I mean, I think there's over how many people are in here? Hundreds. So it says the tactics, routines, habits of billionaires, icons, and real and world-class performers. And so it goes through people from like sports athletes to business venture capitalists to, um, you know, people who are the best in their field that he's featured on his podcast. And they all answer a bunch of questions in terms of like, 
you know, what are sort of the tips and tricks that you recommend for having a fulfilling and meaningful life? And a lot of them, like I would say 80% of them meditate. And so again, this sort of connects that, that point. Um, and so this has been a book that I would say really clicked. And I sort of started like doing some self explore, self exploration in terms of trying some of these things out. And Cal Newport, I believe is in this book, or he's in uh, tribes of mentors, which is sort of the book that came out after this one. And um, in that book, you know, Cal Newport talks a little bit about his system and um, Cal Newport, by the way, is a computer science professor, PhD. So he's got same degree, different area, but PhD, same degree that I have. Um, and he doesn't have any social media accounts. So you got a computer science PhD at uh, Georgetown University who doesn't have any social media accounts, right? And he goes through like why it's problematic. And so I read, I've gone, I've sort of like done the, uh, what's the equivalent of the sort of the spinoff shows, right? The sort of spinoff show of Tim Ferriss's book has been some of Cal Newport's work, which focuses on one specific theme that Tim talks about in his book. So it's, uh, the deep work has really been probably the, one of the better books that I've read, I'd say in the last three to five years, mm. and because I've, I've been able to adop, adopt the system like that just makes sense for my life. And um, I have a to do a working to do list. And so rather than saying, I'm going to work for uh, three hours on this NIH paper, I will just say, I'm going to give myself a three hour deep work session. And then when I'm in the three hour deep work session, I go to my to-do list and I assess and I prioritize based off when things are due and I get it done. I just work on the things that's, that's most pressing in that time. And I feel like I'm more in control. That's another word that comes up a lot. I think in anxiety, um, in the anxiety world is like people, if you don't have good control, people sometimes I think uh, get frustrated or they get overly nervous or they, they feel that something with their life is beyond what they can specifically control. And so the more that people feel that they're in control of certain things, I think the better And, it, and this system, at least for me, makes me feel like, okay, I'm not in sort of a work debt where I'm, I owe people things that are five and six days late. It's a, uh, so it, it's a book that really resonated with me and I would encourage people to find whatever system or whatever methodology works best for them. So yeah. anyway, it's a, it's some of the content that's included within this book. Oh yeah. It's a good book. Uh, what, uh, both those work books? Uh, yeah. I would say if you're interested, I would say if you're, if you're like, obviously with, I, I actually rented deep work from the library because I'm oh, okay. trying, I, I buy books from Amazon and I collect them. And I'm like, they sit on the shelf. So either I want to be able to like donate them back to the library the ones that I, I probably not going to read again, but deep work is one that I rented that I'll probably buy because uh, that one, if you're interested in the productivity system, I would say deep work is the one to create sort of the structure and sort of the, the rationality provides a lot of uh, journal article papers that support why that system is effective. And then um, if you're looking for like little snippets of like people that, maybe you resonate with or who inspire you. He's got a lot of cool tips and tricks in the tools of Titans book. You could just, you don't have to read it like a book from the beginning to the end. You could look at it like an encyclopedia and say, I'm interested in podcast gear. Right. And so he's got this whole, I know it's not ideal, but yeah, he's got yeah. this whole section on podcast and like what kind of equipment he uses. And so you don't have to read the book beginning to end in tools of Titans it's more of a resource manual, yeah. Swiss army knife of sorts for a lot of topics. That's cool, man. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go all over the place with uh, systems and cause my brain went with, Oh, that's interesting. We, we all love to work with systems. This goes into my, I'm going to put it in my box of, uh, we are in a simulation that that's just a retard, you know, it's a weird belief, whatever. It's not, a, mm -hmm. I don't even want to say it's a belief. It's just a, a thing that I, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? It's just in a, I don't know how to say, how do you say that? Like, it's not a belief, but it's something that I'm open to that we are in a simulation. So I sure. just, I'm going to put that in there with. It's a possibility. Well, it's, because we like to work with systems, it kind of makes me think of programming, how we like to take a program, put it into our brain, and now we're able to work and activate. You know what I mean? It, it, it sounds weird and foolish, but. Again, I'm going to put that in a box because <laughs> that's a yeah. different conversation. I would like to have sure. a conversation if you're interested in that, by the way. I, I've been mm -hmm. trying to find someone to have a conversation about simulation theory and all that. 
Uh, I'd probably want to read a little bit more about that, but we can have yeah, a conversation. I, yeah. I, I'm a, my brain I'm is somewhere else. I'm definitely an expert. There's no research I, with me at all. There's all <laughs> just imagination <laughs> um, yeah. and matrix. Uh, that helps me think of stuff. But anyway, uh, so we're going to talk about podcasting since we're talking about the tools of Titan and you brought up the podcast, podcast gear that you use and all that. Um, so... What do you have any questions about podcasting, or did you want to just just discuss it? Do I have any questions about it? Y yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do I want to? Well, I mean, you know, the big thing is again, like I said, a lot of uh, at, at first I was like, well, I shouldn't just do a podcast to say I have a podcast, so I'm like doing right. I, I always said, you know, if I was going to do one, I think it's important that um, I fit a need, right? And like, sure, I can record for my own self-serving purposes but at the same time it's like well for me i think that it's important that you know i'm realizing that a lot of my students as they're working for, working from home with coronavirus like some of them need support and they need someone to talk to about certain things about things they're struggling with like from a technology perspective or from a workload how what, what kind of system is all kind of coming together now um a kind of system that they need to use to, to get their school work done um and so I sort of said, well, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for it where I didn't want to do the podcast until I knew that a, I had something to say that would be a theme that could be continually discussed Yeah, niche, um, and provide additional value to people more than just one episode or, you know, a series of 10 episodes. I wanted it to be something that could be long lasting. And I need, I, th I wanted to make sure I thought through it appropriately. Yeah, so um, to do that, you know, I, I think that, that was the first thing. And so I, I'm always interested sort of how you got into podcasting, number one, and how, like, what are some of the, if someone's brand new, like myself, that's considering it and I, I decided I'm going to do it, but I want to like sort of know like what sort of gear do you need? What sort of platforms do you need? Like, do you need, like, I know your show has like introductory music, like, where do, I, I've even looked up like how to take, you know, where do you get that source music? Do you have to pay for it? Do you generate it yourself? What are some good sources where you get that in all the, all the specifics? Like I know the content of the show, you have to have like good show notes and have things to talk about and guests that are able to talk about them. But I, I guess sort of like, okay, if you're going to do it, what are some things that maybe a newbie in your journey, you know, if you can comment from your perspective, what are some things that maybe a newbie to podcasting should be thinking about or what kind of gear would be helpful to get that maybe they don't need right away. But like looking back now, you're like, Oh, I really wish I had that microphone stand. So I didn't have to hold a microphone in my hand the whole time. You mm -hmm. know, like little, little things like that, that maybe would come up um, right. as I be begin the process. So that way I could sort of hopefully, you know, sidestep some of those issues and, and, be in a better spot for it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that, man. That's good questions actually. Um, so first I would like to ask you the question, what interests you? What, what do you like to talk about? What do you like to do? All these things that you can write down, of course, journaling. I love journaling. I just, I recently started doing that. I hate writing. Doesn't make sense, but I'm starting to like appreciate. I'm starting to appreciate writing more. I'm starting to blog more. All that shit. That's besides. That's the besides the point. Um, yeah. But you find what's what's interesting to you, and then you write things down. What you like to do, blah blah, blah and that will be your niche, right? Mm -hmm. So I learned about this with YouTubing and all that. When I, before I made a YouTube channel, what do I want to do on YouTube? Okay, well let me find my. What do I like to do? And let me do that. Blah blah blah. So. If you have something that you like, like me in this show, I like to talk about philosophy. I like to talk about mental health, physical health. I like to talk about martial arts. Uh, so I can keep that around there. We always talk, sure. everything we mentioned is based on philosophy. So it's, it, that's perfect. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. we go off the charts a little bit with, because of me, but we still get back into philosophy and life in general. So that's where it keeps it there. And everyone talks about philosophy, whether they know it or whether they know it or they don't, whatever. Um, and meditation, that was another one. Um, so you find those things that interest you and that, that could be your, t your, your subjects or your topics that you can always talk about in every show, every episode, whatever. Um, you can go, you can go through the, 
that thing and break it down like you like you have your system of of being so systematic with like you like to be specific with things and i, I noticed that so you can do that you can write things down and just make a, what do you call that uh i can't explain it I'll, I'll try to draw it out for you but is this thing i'll try hold on let me try to be quick okay so you have the i don't know if you can see this you can't press damn you can't see it can you uh, somewhat. Uh, Can you see down I here? See, I see a, lot, a bunch of words. There you go. That's better. Can you see that? That's okay. better. So you see that box that I had, that rectangular? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm doing there? The, the hierarchy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. The hierarchy. I didn't know what it was called, but yeah. hierarchy bracket, whatever you call it. You do that, and you'll f you'll have all these different topics of what you could talk about in each episode. So let's say That's meditation. Cool. Meditation. Yeah, so you can break it down to mindfulness, to consciousness, to what all the way down to how do you start and blah blah blah. you know what i mean so it's like there's a root which is like your the root can't change yes which is the top top of the hierarchy right yeah yeah that can't change but then components of the root can serve as their own sub root yeah right? and then you create topics to talk about that fit that specific niche so like um yeah, that that's helpful. That's very that's, helpful. That's one thing you can do out of the many. I, I don't do that yeah. specifically. It just came to my mind. That's what I think I do on top of my head, and I just do it. Uh, I'm like, oh, what do I want to talk about today? And I'm like, oh, let me just talk about this. Like uh, this tribe book I'm reading. Uh, I don't know if you've read this book. Great book. I have not. What's it? Uh, Sebastian Younger? Yeah, Sebastian Younger. It's uh, oh, on yeah. homecoming and belonging. It's a book about human behavior, basically. Uh, he goes into PTSD uh cuz he was a journalist in war so he he got to he goes into a lot with uh numbers in comparison to how people are, are subjects of PTSD I'm trying to like say this for fast without being too to talk too much about it but human behavior is the main point of it I think mm -hmm. and I love human behavior so I can take a lot of from that book and apply it to what I talk about here so I'll talk about the book discuss the book and then just break it down to what I'm trying to say in my episode so yeah. that's like you know what I mean I can you I can make five episodes off of this book because of what he says in here and I can just talk about different things Makes so sense, yeah you can do that you can set you don't have to so there's another question I, I know I had how long do you record uh it's how right. long you can go how long do you think you're you find yourself i don't like to think about this of how long do you think someone's interested in you because i know people can't listen to someone for five minutes so i don't know who's going to listen to me for the past five minutes and i learned not to excuse my french not to give a fuck about people that don't want to listen to me past five minutes it's right. if you don't like me because i talk too much or i or i curse or i whatever the fuck you don't like about me I can't think about that. That's what mindfulness does for me. It allows me to just do what I got to do. So that's another thing for people that are starting off. Don't. You can choose what you want to do, whether you want to have a system of catering to your audience. I cater to an audience that just likes me for who I am and doesn't care sure. about the, the the nuances, I guess, the, the, the particular things that they don't like. You know what I mean? The people that I, that will like the way I talk or the, like what I discuss will just listen to me, and that's all that matters. So that covers the fan base thing. Uh, it covers a lot of things, honestly, uh, in terms of your personality, who you are. Um, just be yourself, as they always say. Uh, what is yeah. yourself? You know, people could tell if you're not being. People could tell if you're not being uh, genuine, uh, authentic, authentic. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of weird, but even since the first time I've been on your show, many. I mean. I felt like I feel like I'm a little bit less guarded now. I'm a little more comfortable. The yeah. first time I, I was like very specific, speaking like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, make, making sure I was speaking clearly and um, my like I noticed like my throat at the end of it was like a little sore from like speaking a little bit, um, you know, focusing on like the tone and my words. And this one, I'm just having a conversation, so that, it's a little bit more. It might feel that way. It's a little bit more free flowing. This call. Um, what about the structure of the episode like obviously if you go for an hour like you don't want to just like ramble back and forth like we sort of had transitions right we started off by talking about um COVID-19 and how it affects schools and then we transitioned into meditation for a third of the show and then a little bit of books and podcasting now we're here right and so sort of like do you go into an episode and sort of 
structure those components out in advance or do you sort of have these broad ranging things and we'll see where it goes i like um, the thing yeah it depends on the person so I, I i know that i don't know you completely but i know enough that just to say that you like to be systematic so i think if you want structure you can keep your structure like you would have all right i want to talk about three things three different topics i'm going to focus on that and stay on that and that's it however the way you would want to work is the way you do it you everything works for you it's your system you know what i mean you got to find yeah. your system you got to work with it my system the way you 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 just discussed you just uh demonstrate it is we t remember early before we started recording you brought up podcasting or how to podcast i'm like oh i like that we can discuss that but you see sure. how i didn't start off talking about podcasting Right. Like yeah, it, it and now, that. yeah, now it's about podcasting at the end of the episode. I didn't do that on mm -hmm. purpose, but, uh, I, but I, but I did keep in mind cause I wrote it down on my, my book here. I write, I write notes down so that I know I want to keep, I want to talk about this. So mm -hmm. podcasting, I, I, I'll underline, we got to talk about this. So I'll let the conversation go where it goes. So we started talking about everything you just discussed and yeah. And then we go from there. I like to go off the flow of what you are communicating to me. I like to listen to you. I like to be open mm -hmm. to wherever it goes. And then, but I want to at least talk about podcasting. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'll, absolutely. if I have to, I'll like, I'll stop it right in the moment. Like, look, I, I, whatever. I'll try. How do I say this? I want like not not doing it in a rude way, but I'll try to pause it. Like, that's cool, man. That's great. That's that we had this conversation. But we should talk about podcasting. You know what I mean? Because like, you know, then we'll just go into that. But gotcha, that's yeah. that's just the way I do it, though. Everyone has their sure. own system. You know what I mean? What about um? No, it's very helpful. I completely get it. What yeah. about um? So, one of the other things in terms of like, I guess we could talk about gear and then um, software that sort of you how you rec what are you recording into at this particular point in time? I know you've talked about Anchor in the past as a way of uploading and sort of as a platform to record stuff in. So gear, software, and then um, I'd be interested. Also, I think the other piece of it is post-production. Like what happens after you stop the recording? All right. So uh, I'll go a couple. Um, let me uh, bring this up before I forget. Uh, so Anchor, the app that you brought up, is yeah. Anchor anchor.fm. Look it up on Play Store or the App Store. It's a mm -hmm. great resource for you to upload your podcast once you're done and that's all you can do everything from the app if you don't have any equipment and you want to start now you're ready you got let's say you have your niche and you have everything that you want to talk about and you're like i'm ready to start now but i don't have the money or i have to buy this equipment i like to just start off with what i have but if you okay. want to buy the equipment you can do that eventually your podcast doesn't have to be perfect in the beginning because it's not going to be perfect in the beginning it's going to suck and then you're going right. to get better. You're going to see all these little things that you don't like, and then you're going to fix it naturally. So download the app, anchor.fm. Uh, anchor I think it's mm -hmm. under. Um, also, follow if you have Facebook. I don't like to be on Facebook, but I like to get on Facebook for this uh, specific group. It's a private group from for Anchor Podcasters. Uh, it's called uh, Anchor Podcasters Learn and Connect. So join that group, um, mm -hmm. and you can be in the community with there's at least 9,000 people in here that you can ask any question you want, anything. And then people that podcast in the beginning or podcast for years have, are there to help you. There are people that have a fan base. There are people that have, there's, there's so many different people that are legit. There's some, you know, people that <laughs> are like, okay, but some people are legit helpful and it's a great uh, group to join. There's like other groups sure. you can join too, but I, I just recommend in general joining a community of podcasters so that you can learn from them as mm -hmm. well. Uh, that's what I do <clears throat> just to get perspective. So the gear, it doesn't matter, but if you, if you're, if you want specific gear, uh, you brought out that book, Titan, what is it called? Tools of Titans. Tools of Titans. Yeah. yeah. You can, you can buy that book if you want. I haven't read it, but do you recommend that book for what gear? Well, like, I mean, if, you, if you're looking, if you're looking for the gear, there's a website called kit.com. Okay. And uh, Tim Ferriss actually posts all the same stuff on kit.com. Okay. So um, there you, go. you can, a lot of the same things that he writes in the book, he has like links and he writes about them on, on there. So if you type in, I'm not exactly sure, but it's on 
If you go on kit.com and you type in like podcast, Tim Ferriss, it'll come up with all this stuff. And so, you know, it goes through the recorder. It goes through different microphones you can choose from. Um, like this is a blue cell cover for the microphone. I mean, not that, I mean, it's super cheap, but it gives you the links. So it's easy. It's super easy. Um, you know, we're doing this through Zoom. In the past, he's done things through something called Ecamm Call Recorder mm-hmm. um, that he really likes. Um, different mics for different situations. What else has he got here? And then um, different software programs. So, like, to do the post production. So, things like um, Audacity is a big one. A lot of people like yep. or. Um, yeah, I haven't really, I'm not an expert. I would have to nope. play around with Audacity a lot, but. Right. But um, Audiophonic is another one he has on here. So there's just different software that he recommends um, to get yourself started. And it's basically all the gear that he uses and, you know, hundreds of millions of downloads for right. his podcast. And so it's like, if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for you. Kind right, of right, right. You know what I mean? It works for him that, at that scale. It'd be good enough for you. And right. it's not, it's not the most expensive. You don't need a studio. You don't need, you know, he does a lot of it right out of his living room. Right. <laughs> Brings exactly. Invites people, you know, yeah. and so um, that sort of is always refreshing and because uh, he's just comes across as a normal guy, but um, it's like, these are the, the if you're going to invest in equipment, these are the kinds of equipment that I would recommend. So that's like, I have an, this is an audio technica ATR 2100 USB. And so this plugs directly into my computer. Right. right. That's how I'm, that's how I'm recording this. Um, you know, but I also, I do have a zoom H six recorder where it's got four plugins. You can have four people in the podcast wow. at once. I, I, I don't know that. how to use it. <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know how to use it. Yeah. Um, but like, even like things like mixers, right? Like, do you need a mixer? What's the benefit of having a mixer? Um, does the zoom H six already have an inherent mixer within it? Like, you know what I mean? So, I have some of these, some of these equipments um, because like, you know, around the holidays and such birthdays and people are like, you know, what, what do you want for a gift? Um, You know, a lot of times I know this is something that I will want in the future and I have an immediate use for some of it right now. But so I always tell people to get stuff like that. You know, people, you know, I don't need anything. I don't need things in in life. I could buy a lot of things if I wanted them. I'm fortunate. Yeah. I have to have things, but if people insist on buying me things, then I prefer things that are useful. And right. so, yeah. um, and so, uh, that's kind of how I stumbled upon, you know, this microphone and this headset and such. So, um, I'm very fortunate that people have gifted me these kinds of things. Over the years. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have- get it. I didn't, didn't get it all in one shot. I'll tell you that. It's, right. You know, years I acquired this stuff. So, yeah. um, I knew I wanted to do a podcast at some point, but I was waiting, like I said, what's the right time and such. So that's how I came into this. And I was like, well, the ones that I would want, I'm just going to go with people who I trust that have that had a track record of success and they recommend it. And so if it works for them, it'll work for me. That's right. kind of like how that was my thinking behind it. I love this mic. This is a good mic. It's a good headset. So, um, but what about software on the post-production side or like music? Cause I know like one of the most frustrating things is trying to find, intro and outro music for, for your podcast, it, you know, cause you don't want just want to like start, you could just start recording it with audio, but like, you know what I mean? To give it a little bit of structure, right. Is sort of having an intro music and an outro music sort of like, you know, the episode is beginning cause you're hearing the intro and you know, the episode is ending cause it's closed. The audio is stopped and it's going to the music as an outro. And so what sort of software or music tools would you recommend for music that's not copyrighted, right? Mm-hmm. That's a big, you know, and where do you get it? Does, does anchor have some of this built in um, or uh, what sort of tools do you use to find audio files that are not copyright or pu- freely available in the public domain for you to use for your podcast? All right. Uh, quick example before we go into that, I have this set up right here on my phone. Uh, for example, for people listening that want to start their podcast, you just ask me a series of questions uh, and that changes the what I wanted to say. And that's that's what I have to uh, you can choose. I can choose to say what I wanted to say or I can 
go into your question. So that's your, you as the host of the podcast, you have decision, you make that decision. So I'm going to mm-hmm. decide to answer your question instead of going to the, the different route where I was going to go with talking about what I, what headset I'm using or headsets I use and equipment I use or the fact yeah. that you're wearing Joe Rogan's headset that I wanted to get. <laughs> Is that all these things that had all these questions, all these things that lingered over there. I'm like, all right, you asked the question. Now I'm focused on that question so we can continue this conversation. I got you. Yeah. That, so I'm just I'm just putting it out there. So for anyone wondering how to like contain a conversation, that's based on your communication skills and all that. I'm still learning, of course, but it's about listening to the, your guests and letting mm-hmm. them speak, and then you decide what you want to do from that. But anyway, so to answer your question, uh, or if you're gonna sorry, if you're gonna talk about the stuff, at least go back to the question. Um, so Anchor has you can't see this probably. I have to go close to the yeah can you see it i can see it yeah so anchor has their own interludes uh the intros to uh your own for your podcast so you can decide Mm -hmm. from that so once you upload i'll have to do a video on this but how to do how to upload stuff on anchor and all that but um you just have to play with the app or you can, I think they, they already have like YouTube videos of, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they have YouTube videos on how to get through this app, but you mm-hmm. upload your podcast. You can include a interlude on the show that they have a lot of different intros. You can just start off with that. You don't have to make up your own or buy your own, whatever you can hire someone that, you know, or maybe someone may offer you uh, an intro. If you, if that, whatever you prefer, personally, I've recorded my own, I use my H4N recorder and I just stuck it in front of my guitar and I started to play random stuff that I wanted to tinker with. And then I found something that I liked and then I, all right, I'll go with that. And that is going to be my, my intro. So if you notice in the beginning, I had one intro and then I didn't like it because it was too long. It was like almost 20 seconds. And I didn't want, I was like, that's a long ass intro. Who's going to listen to 20 seconds? Let me just make it shorter. So I, I made a basic one. And it was like seven to eight seconds. And I was like, that's perfect. And it's, it's just an intro to your show. That's it. Mm-hmm. So you can have that if you want. Or you can do, the, the like I said, the, it's included with the app, the Anchor app. Um, or you can, whoever you know, you can ask them if they can do it. You can pay them something or whatever. Um, sure. Uh, what was the other question? Sorry. The, hold on. Give me a second. So the, okay. so- the software that you use. Oh, okay. Um. And then, you know, so the music software, which you just addressed, which is the interludes and you made your own. Right. And then um, any software that you okay. use in addition to the hardware. And then maybe we could reconnect and talk about your hardware. Okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> we don't have to talk about the hardware, but whatever. Uh, I can list them too. That makes it easier. Um, the uh, I use what I've been using for years, Adobe Premiere Pro. It's easier for mm-hmm. me to edit this video and then put my... Uh, audio right there and lay everything down uh before before i did the video i will still use adobe premiere pro and just use it as an mp3 format so at the end you'll export it as an mp3 file instead of uh, a video file and you can easily just upload that to the uh i what i do is i have a system of edit uh i'll do the mp3 and the video i'll upload mm-hmm. the video on youtube i'll upload the mp3 file onto onto my google drive i'll go on my phone to google drive download that file upload it to anchor uh and i can do it on the go or if i'm at home and i can go to the anchor.fm website i can upload the episode straight from there uh Mm -hmm. and and put new episode upload the mp3 file and then uh put the details in or whatever so i have my own system (laughs) So that I can just make it easy as possible. And that's the way I do it. I just use Adobe Premiere Pro and I use Google Drive to do whatever I want to do if I'm going to do it on the phone. And then I'll put mm-hmm. it on uh, uh, the Anchor. Uh, yeah. Now, just one one follow-up question since you're talking about your process for like Adobe Premiere Pro. That's helpful. That's nice to know. I'm, so how much does that cost normally? Right. Okay. And then number two is for when you create when you create the video file and then you create the audio file, do you ever run into issues where you run out of space either on your physical computer or do you do cloud-based storage for it? 
Uh, I have a lot of space, so um, I'll have all my episodes on the, uh, what do you call it, on my hard drive, on my external hard drive. Long story short, that's like gone. So now I have to, I, I thankfully I had episodes uploaded on my Google Drive, like I said. So mm. you can use cloud spaces, but as, I think that's good to use that but as a backup on top of your external hard drive because it does get crowded. But what are you going to do with your episodes? <sighs> Depends on what you're going to do with them. So I would suggest doing both external hard drive and hard drive and or all three and the uh, the cloud. You should have it all just just in case you lose something, yeah. your hard drive fries on you. <laughs> so it um, wouldn't be good practice to just use Google Drive or something and then yes. leave it and like upload it to YouTube and then like sort of let YouTube store it. Yeah, um, yeah that too. Yeah. You know, um, and then yeah. that sort of doesn't take up your own space. But then I guess the original files, you know, because that's that's a thing I, I have a challenge with when I record videos is it takes up a lot of hard drive space on my computers. And so I try to put them. I have a Dropbox account, so I usually deselect them um, from the hard drive. And so they only are in cloud space. And then if I want a physical hard drive, I'll put it on like um, I have this solid state drive, like a little just basic external solid state drive. That just plugs into the computer. And, nice. Um, so I try to do that to keep it offline. But you know, I I'm always interested in hearing people's systems. Like you said, I'm a systems person. So yeah. Um, you know, what sort of like how do you deal with? You're going to get to a capacity where you're going to have thousand episodes in this one at some point in the future. And so clearly, I, your your computer you're either going to have to upgrade the computer, or you're going to have to dump some of the content onto an external drive. And then how often do you ever? Then you got to store those physical hard drives. Um, yeah. you know, and so I, I always am interested in sort of like, I know that's not part of podcasting in and of itself, but it is something that will start to build up over time. And so I think about that, um, cause I was recently going through a file naming project. Like I had this, this large 65,000 files from like back when I was an undergraduate 10, 10 years ago. And, um, I'm like, I got to do something. I got to find where these files are. And I got to, I created a root structure just like you drew on your piece of paper for like organizing my files. And, and so, uh, but I realized like, wow, like I don't have any space on my computer. I got to offload some of these. I bought the external drive to organize some of it. So I, I'm interested in, in how you have dealt with the issue of all these files. And so it sounds like you use a combination of external physical drives, not on your computer, right? You just mm -hmm. plug it in and then you store the hard copies there. And then you upload them to the cloud through either Google Drive or through YouTube. And then that, if you upload it to YouTube, it probably doesn't take up space on your physical Google Drive account. Right, right. Right? Is that true? Yep. yep. Um, okay, cool. So then that is very, very helpful. Yeah, very, cool. very helpful. So we talked about Anchor. We talked about uh, Google Drive and sort of how you store your stuff. We talked about Adobe Premiere Pro. How much does that cost? Uh, <laughs> so... If they have a the way Adobe does it now is that you you buy a subscription, and mm. you, I have the old school version of I don't I don't have a subscription I have the uh, the uh, the version that you buy you know what I mean you buy it and then it's there forever like it's yeah. the old version uh, I forget what year it is but um, also it's I didn't, damn it's, it's been a while since I had it it's been years but anyway. It's been it, now. I forget how much it costs. It's like eighty dollars, seventy dollars. Uh, I forget, man. I honestly forget. You have to look this up. Okay. Uh, but if you want something that's free, audacity, audacity, audacity. Yeah. I think it's called. It's. I tried that, and that's the next best thing. Honestly, if you just want to upload, uh, just sound MP3. audio. Yeah, yeah, audio. But for video, they have different uh, free video. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Cont uh, what do you call it? Editors. That I could recommend. Let me look on this computer yeah. real fast. Because uh, I'm I'm on a Mac here, and a lot of people always talk about Final Cut. And okay, yeah, Final Cut is perfect for Mac. I don't know what else is on Mac, honestly. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to help you there, to be honest, because I'm not the type of person like to go venture about other edit video editors. So I got you. Yeah. Sorry, I, I was just I just wasn't sure in terms of like what's typically the cost structure and you know to get yourself yeah. started. Of course, like you say, you don't have to go down that road. But if it's something you're going to stick with it for a while, I think it's important to kind of realize like what are your options and things that because I know that these are things that when I first was thinking about doing um, 
things like podcasting, people that have had one before, they're like, oh, you need, you know, you might want to go to this website for audio. And I sat there and I was like, well, you know, do you have to pay for that? Is it pay for files? And so it's really helpful to learn from someone like yourself who sort of, I think, you know, got a lot of experience, but you're still always learning about, you know, what works well and what's best uh, for you and your circumstances. And so I think it's, it's helpful to hear how you as somebody who I've seen over the last year, really, really over the last year, uh, sort of grow into the podcasting role. I mean, we started off when I had no room in this apartment <laughs> and we were sitting down doing it at my kitchen table for the first time I was on your show. And so it's kind of like realizing throughout your journey, what sort of things have you picked up and what sort of tools do you find useful when going through your process? Right. Andrew. My, sorry. My, my son okay. is like, he's in the background. He's funny. Um, so uh, I did. I, why you, sorry. I was looking up uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and uh, let me write down your question. So I don't forget. What was your question? So I don't forget. Sorry. No, no. The question was, I was, I was just, really praising you for like you know, oh yeah yeah okay. what software you were using was, yeah what software what software programs you were using okay um, i thought you had a to specific do question post, sorry. post production storage um and then you know of course circling back to like what kind of hardware do you have or what kind of hardware do you think you know what are sort of like the categories maybe not the brand that you have right but what are some of the things like if you want to have something that's going to produce a little bit of a better quality product you know what kind of headset, you know, can you get, you know, what, you know, mics are good, good entry level mics to get um, those kinds of things. Like what kind of hardware would be helpful to have, you know, SD cards, maybe, you know, yeah. like yeah. that kind of stuff. Cool. All right. I'll go over that real fast. Uh, let me real fast going over this. Premiere Pro is twenty ninety nine a month mm -hmm. uh, if you want to do that. But if you don't want to do that, you can uh, buy, download video studio ultimate 2020 for 100 dollars. Um, how much 100 they have free trial right. they have a free trial you can check out both uh adobe premiere pro has a free trial too for a 30-day free trial you can check out so you can try both of them see the difference uh all you all you really need f for the person that just wants to put up a video edit with the audio and just put it out there you don't need any special crazy crap that Adobe Premiere Pro has, like you can do so much with Adobe Premiere Pro, so many tools to enhance the video. It's made, it's like made for filmmakers mainly, but they have all these, you know, things below that you could just upload the video and the sound. But uh, going back to the 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 gear here, um, H4N, rec any recorder that has, I don't want to pick up my recorder. Do you have your recorder on you? Uh, it's in the other room. We'll get okay, it. no, no, that's fine. Um, or if you want to, that's yeah, just to show something. I want to show something. Yeah, give me one. Yeah, second. okay. I'll stop here at uh, one All right, this is it. All right, cool. So look, show the bottom of it. Oh, right there, the side, right there. That, I just wanted to see, you see right there? That's an XRL, XRL input. If you want the best quality recording, the XRL input, they, it comes with, uh, I think you have to buy it separately, uh, XRL cable, that, that right there, that connects to the microphone that you have. I have a, uh, I just looked it up so I can explain. Sh sh say it uh, uh a samsung co1 large diagram uh i don't know how to say this word diaphragm cardioid cardioid condenser microphone that's what i have i just i uh i just picked it up by chance i didn't hear anybody use it i think i i think i listened to a couple sound samples but i just went with it because it was 80 dollars. it was cheap for me in my pocket so i just bought it and it works completely well uh, Mike is showing you the XR input. It goes in. Uh, I think the other, I think the other, the other side of the uh, plug goes in. One, sorry. About <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that one goes in. Yeah. So it just goes in that so, and then the other side would go inside the condenser microphone that you're using, uh, and that has the perfect sound quality. 
if you want the best sound quality, that right there, yep, see, he would put that in there, and he would record on his H4N, and he could use that to use the audio portion of his podcast and upload that using an SD card, of course, and put that SD card in your in your laptop or whatever you're going to edit with and then use that. So I use, the way I do it is I have Zoom recording. The video format of it is going to, at the end of this, is going to download that for me and put it into a file. I also have it set up so that it has your side of the conversation. So separate from my side of the conversation because I don't want to use this microphone, is using this microphone uh, to so you can hear me. And I don't want this. So, but I want it in terms of editing. So I'm trying to make it simple. I'm going to use your portion of your recorded uh, sample and put that on the editor and leave that there alone. And I'm going to use my portion as a reference so that I can line up the audio that I'm recording with my H4N right here. The one, You have an H6N. This uh, H6, yeah. Yeah, you have a better one than me. I only have two uh, XR inputs. Okay. Um, you have four, which is awesome because you can have four people conversating at the same time. Four mics, I mean. Um, uh, to, to go back to what I was saying, sorry. Uh, I would record off of this H4N, use this portion of the recording, put it on the editor, and it's going to give me a better audio quality than this right here or any other mic that I'm using that goes directly into the computer. So mm -hmm. you have your microphone in your computer right now so that I can hear you. But sure. if you if you use a different microphone, like a let's say just even a headset, just so I can hear you talk, and you use your actual, like you use that microphone and put it into your recorder with your XRL input, that sound quality, quality is going to be so much better than what I'm picking up right now from your uh, laptop. That makes sense? Yeah, that totally. Yeah, because I mean, you, yeah, because you use it. I think you're using the USB, um, if I'm not mistaken, or you yep, using the, the the USB piece right here. This yeah. wire there's, is connected yeah, to my computer. Right. There's two different ways you can you could have done it using a a, a a jack, a headphone jack, or whatever aux cable, pretty much, and connect it mm -hmm. to your microphone port, or you're using a USB cable, which is less quality. Uh, you, I think I I can't tell this for uh i can't prove this but you can probably prove this yourself by just testing it Re hear your recording from uh using a usb input and then using it on your recorder by XLR. using xrl so much better i don't know i can't explain the details of why there is some uh technical stuff i don't i'm not a sound engineer so i don't know i just know the basic stuff based on my filmmaking experiences of using the xrl over anything else any other cable um I think that's about cool. it, though. Yeah. Wonderful. So, so uh, just to go around full circle, Anchor.fm, great use to put your uh, podcast out there. There's a lot of technical stuff that you have to learn in terms of how you get your podcast on iTunes, how you get your podcast on Google Play Store, but they have uh, a they have that 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 community that I told you about, the Anchor community on Facebook. You can join that. They, a lot of people ask the same question over and over again. How do I upload my podcast on iTunes or Play Store? And people will happily answer that question and guide you through the process. Because it is a little of a process to do all that. Um, it's RSS feeds. The reason why I use Anchor FM or the app is because it gave me a free RSS feed. That's what I wanted. I didn't want to have to pay for an RSS feed, which mm -hmm. gives me the ability to put my podcast out there to all the different platforms, uh, the third party uh, like Google Play Store and iTunes. So that's why I use Anchor because it's free. And I could just put, I could, it's simple as me putting it on the app and then it does the rest of the work for me. It puts it on Play Store, it puts it on iTunes, Spotify, all that because I set it up that way. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of me doing everything manually. Uh, oh, and then the, the gear, you can, what you start, you can, Anchor lets you use your phone. So you can talk your podcast. Obviously, the uh, the quality is gonna not gonna be as good. So if you want to upgrade, you can download mm -hmm. what Mike has. You can listen to his. You're not gonna get his quality what his microphone is capable of doing because he's using a USB. So what you hear from him is not the actual quality because he's not using the XRL. And he he would have to send me his file of his H6N. He would have to send me that MP3 file to me so I can put it on the show so that I can get that quality. It's a it's a process for that, 
but because he has it on his computer, it allows me to automatically just easily just put it on my, uh, from this video from zoom. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. hundred percent. All right. I think I, I went all over the place, but, uh, for the most part, it's helpful. Yeah. It's just the, if you, if you want to start today, just download the app, you can record off your phone and just practice just cause so, you're going to, yeah. What are these? What are these extra little attachments? Oh, those are okay. So that right there on on your uh on your right, that is you can you see how you see those uh those two knobs? You could turn that to a degree. So you look at it, it says ninety degrees and one eighty. It mm -hmm. basically gives you an angle of where uh the recording is coming out. So ninety degrees is coming out this way. It's focused on nine degrees. If you want a wider angle, it's giving you uh the one eighty. So it's listening to more out in the open so the 180 would be more recommended for like if you're playing a guitar or something or uh and there's environment behind you and you want to listen you want to listen i mean you want the environment included with that but if you wanted to focus on the guitar only the 90 degrees you, you could just change that basically so does this record if you didn't have a mic you could plug this into the h6 and it would record from this yes that's a micro that's a specific this. this is a microphone yeah that's a that's a condenser microphone now so the microphone you have right now in front of your face i think yeah. that i'm assuming oh, no that the one that you're using that oh, no the one i have them yeah that's yeah. a condenser microphone you talk into it it just records right there on, on top of it uh yeah. i have a condenser microphone you can't see it but if i take this off I talk right into it. So the condenser, there's, there's different different types of microphones, condenser, shotgun mics, all that. But that's a lot of deep, like technical yeah. stuff. But what you just showed me are just uh, adapters to your your uh, recorder. Can you see? Can I see your recorder again? Uh, sure. Yeah. So right now, look at the top part of it. What's the top part? Oh, right here. Yeah, this comes off. This is little, there a recorder uh, on the top part? Oh, is that, is that where you put your recorder, I'm assuming? You would, yeah, you'd plug those two uh, attachments into it. Okay, so you can decide whether you want to use it as a condenser where you use... You could just talk into it, basically. You connect that, and then you can record right... right see, right there, you already have a microphone. You don't need a, 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 a like what you have right there on Second your... Second microphone. Yeah, that's yeah. Just, that right there that you have on on your on the table is uh I would say more of a higher quality I'm assuming I can't yeah. tell I can't really compare but I would say that because you can use the XRL input and it's focused and it's set on a table and you don't need any kind of special adapter or whatever give me a second right. okay? so there's a lot of different microphones but you have the opportunity to use that straight on if you if that's all you have the H4n cuz I mean the H6n sorry that yeah. thing, cause that thing costs like what, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars? No, this was uh, I got it on Amazon. Oh, okay, because I don't know how much it costs these days. Um, it's not too too bad. I mean, it's it's not cheap. Like it's yeah. not gonna be twenty bucks, but it's no, no, yeah, it's it's pricey. Yeah, I want to say it was like one hundred and eighty bucks or something. Oh, okay, that's cheaper than fuck. I paid. Yeah. I think I paid three hundred for mine years ago. Though. That's ten years ago. Um, yeah, it's a lot sorry. cheaper now than now with the, you know globalization and uh, technology. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was 180 dollars or something. That's cool, man. So, so that rate, that recorder, you can record straight on that if you want. But if you want a better quality mic, which I'm sure you're gonna see the difference, you got the mic you have there, or you have this mic. This mic is actually pretty good. Uh, there's so many mics out there to decide from, so that's where it gets kind of like tricky. I don't know what to pick. So right, then you got like a four hundred dollars sure that like Joe Rogan has. Oh my god, <laughs> right? I looked that and up. He's got the the boom arms. Like, is that a boom arm? Or is this that is, just a microphone stand that it's a microphone stand with a boom arm. Yeah. This is the, the boom arm, whatever that holds it for me, holds the mic yeah. for me. It's just on the table. It's a, it's a, it has, it has a, I bought this for like $20 on Amazon. It came, I bought it with this. Uh, this was $80 separate. And then I, this was like $20, but I have wow. to put additional weight on it. Cause it, because the higher I lift it, the more weight shifts down. So you mm -hmm. kind of have to add a, uh, I put my foot foot, you know, those foot weights, that you work yep. out with. I just put that mm -hmm. there on the side, on the behind it, so it can give me that counterbalance. Um, but they have other ones that connect to the table that you can just screw onto the table. There's like so many things you can decide from, but this is all right. This is good for me to bring to you. Like you, you, we want to, we yeah. want to go record at your house. Uh, but if you want something more that state that's stationary that stays there, you can buy the the one that connects to the table. They have different ones. 
I forget what it's called. Uh, Andrew, the kids are getting wild in the background. I know. <laughs> we can, we can, yeah, we can uh, finish up. Yeah, we yeah we're wrapping it up anyway with uh, this or whatever. But I think I, I just wanted to cover everything to make sure I got uh, all the basics out the way. Yeah, and, for and, sure. This has been really helpful. Again, like there's just so much more to it than I originally thought. I mean, but it to, at, at a certain perspective there's not much to it like you can start by just recording from your phone talking to it or, and then upload yeah. but you know but if you think if you think about like okay i want to do it where i want it to become a show make it more systemic and i need to provide a little bit of structure what are some of the additional details that go into it like software yeah. programs to do post production editing like you know um i would imagine that within adobe premiere pro right now it's flip, flipping back and forth between yourself and me as we talk like i could see you you could see me but i'm i know that like to make it like that production quality i'm sure there's parts where you could take the two videos and splice them down the center so it's left and right and people could see both of us at the same time mm -hmm. you know i'm sure there's all kinds of capabilities with those software you just have to you know put yourself out there and try it so yeah um, there's a lot but i got like, a lot of things that i need to be working on while we're in quarantine still yeah because i, I kind of get a feeling we're going to be here a little bit longer than people realize i'm hopeful we didn't get to talk too too much about jujitsu but i'm hopeful we'll be able to go back um sometime <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah i'm hoping I really, so too I, man i i really miss it and um you know obviously i, I asked you if we could schedule this for 11 o'clock because i feel it would be sort of ironic to connect at a time where you and I have typically connected, which is at jujitsu practice. So, right. um, that's part of the reason it sounds sort of stupid and cliche, but <laughs> it's something where it's sort of like, it's sort of, you know, it just feels like 11 o'clock was a good time to do it. So, yeah. um, but I'm, you know, I'm glad we were able to do this. Yeah. And I'm hoping that, yeah, I'm hoping for the same, man, just to return back. Cause I miss rolling and open mat right now. Technically open mat just started at one o'clock. I know. <laughs> A lot of us would be in there uh, socializing and just beating each other up, but uh, yeah, that's, that's I really miss that shit. But I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully we get back to that. Is there a way we can still we can still like uh, do some type of thing where we invite each other to his, the houses and still roll? But yeah, it's not I the know. same. I was talking. I think I was talking with Steve. Not you know maybe about a week and a half ago about like. Even when things do open back up, you can't have an open mat like a Sunday open mat, right? No. Where it's like there's no space. I mean, I, I I'm not going to speak for Phil and, and Rick and what they want to do with their business and their studio, but like, do they have to put caps on the number? Do you have to like pre-sign up for a class, like, to, you know, to keep like say okay, to make sure that there's enough distance? Do we have to have? You know, maybe instead of having an unlimited amount where people, whoever shows up, shows up, maybe and you say, okay, we need to cap this at like 12 students and, you know, yeah, that's you know what I mean? So that, yeah. You know what I mean? And then you're spread out throughout the mat, like, and then you have to offer more classes in order to do it. Like it would take a big concerted effort to make that happen. But, and then, you know, you don't know what people's lives are. Like if they're, if they have a job where maybe they're a healthcare provider and they get Corona and then they bring it into the studio. So there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of, of sort of uh, contingencies that need to be, I think, thought through. And that's why you just don't open up and say, we're going to go back and roll. And I'm positive that we will go back and train again. And I know that there's some pretty exciting stuff that, um, you know, that's going to be, you know, seminars for people that have been at balance for a while, you know, those kinds of things. Um, so I'm looking forward to that when we get back. Yeah, It's just, you just don't know. You just don't know when it's going to go back and sort of like what it's going to be like the first time you go back. Um, so a lot of unknown still, right? but I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that we will be able to go back at some point and, um, you know, the extent to which we're going to be able to go back and do full rolling, you know, right away. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, there's just, you're talking about your chest to chest with a lot of people when you're training. So, yeah you're definitely not social distanced yeah of course I, I, i'm hopeful that you know we'll be able to get back and do what we love yeah i miss that shit all right man uh i wanted to go on and talk about jujitsu because now you got me like hiked up on that because <laughs> <laughs> uh, i had ideas like 
oh, we could do, I could do my own little fight club where everyone comes here. No, I can't do that. But yeah. uh, ideas are circulating. But anyway, um, thanks for uh, being on the show again, man. Uh, my pleasure. Always, thanks for having me. It's always great having you because you're so fucking, the way you talk, I'm sitting here like, I'm too dumb. But you know, I'm just no, gonna continue. No, 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 no I'm, I'm being, I'm being silly and insecure. But it's, it's just my way of making fun of myself. Uh, yeah. It comes off as insecurity, but it's just me making fun of myself. Um, but the way you talk, man, is so particular. And I love talking to you because I, for people listening too, it's just it gives you a different perspective to how my I'm like a cave person, but I still have my smarts but you have your smarts mm -hmm. and you have your own way of thinking and everyone has their own way of thinking man and yep. it's i just love it i don't know i love that me and you can have sit down and have a conversation for two hours about right. everything we just discussed and it's with a purpose behind it you know besides us just genuinely having a conversation you know what i mean 100 so, percent. Uh, yeah 100 percent. that's what that's what's beautiful about life you, know, you can yeah. just talk like you talk about anything and you could agree on certain things. You could disagree. You can be enlightened yeah. by certain things. You can yeah. be close-minded about certain things. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's, just, it's a beautiful thing that, you know, again, we're fortunate enough that we have things like podcasts that allow us to do these kinds of things. And, um, you know, that we live in a country where you could, you have freedom of speech, right? Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, you can do these kinds of things, you know? And so I think that's, I always try to focus on the positive and, and be thankful for what I do have rather than wishing for things that I don't have. So. right exactly there's a lot behind that but yeah man 100%. pretty much all right dude thank you for, right. again for being on and thank let's you. do this again let's do this again man i like this shit totally all totally right? we, we'll, we'll talk about the ufc card tonight you know another time all right cool man yeah we should do <laughs> damn i forgot to talk about that i wanted to talk about that all right it's fine it's all good all right, all right. uh stop this or whatever sounds good thanks buddy all right thank you man talk to you soon all right later Bye. all right guys i hope you've enjoyed that episode if you want to follow Mike on Twitter, you can follow him at B-R-U-N-E-A-U-M-I-L. That is Bruno Mill, if I'm not saying that wrong. It's B-R-U-N-E-A-U-M-I-L. Or you can read it on the, the notes, of course. You can follow me as well if you want. William Knows Not. I'm also on Instagram. William Knows Nothing. I'm also on Facebook <laughs> and YouTube. If you want to watch the the uh, video version of this podcast, but if you've already listened to this whole thing, you probably don't want to watch it all over again. So, but you can look forward to uh, other episodes on there. I'm gonna I'm trying to do more content, put more content out there on YouTube. Because uh, I'm just trying to improve, man. There's always room for improvement. There's always things to do. And I'm working my way up the top of the ladder. Or whatever the fuck I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just keep on going. For those of you that are supporting me by just listening, by sharing, or whatever you're doing, I appreciate you. If you're not sharing or anything, and you're just listening, and that's all you're doing, that's fine. I appreciate you still because you're giving me the time. You're listening and I'm hoping that all this shit that I'm putting out there is helpful. I mean, it's helpful for me. It's therapy. It, it, it's podcasting in general does a lot for me. And I'm hoping that I encourage anyone to, you know, do whatever it takes to uh, to do what you want to do. If you want to learn how to podcast and all that, um, I hope this episode helped you. Again, you follow the instructions. Uh, as I mentioned, you can learn how to podcast. There's a lot of information out there and learn how to podcast. It's fairly simple. The only thing is you have to remain consistent and you got to have your purpose behind it to keep you motivated to do it on and on and on. And yeah, you need to have the courage to do it. Not a lot of people like doing that shit. But uh, that being said, I appreciate you fucks and I hope you value life. Value time. <laughs>